What I do not agree with the leader of minority with is that holders of independent offices, there is absolutely nothing in the Constitution that says a holder of an independent office cannot be charged or is above the law. And the matters that Mary uh, Margaret Nyakango has been charged with in court are out there in the public domain, are issues that came, or she's being accused of, issues that were happened at a time she was not the controller of budget, way back in 2016, in some financial institution that uh, she managed or ran. And there are complaints lodged. And therefore, when investigative, uh, Honorable Speaker, I hold a constitutional office as leader of majority. If at the time I was selling meat as a butcher in Kikuyu, I had certain improprieties, and Junet, who used to supply me with cows, complains that I never paid him, or I took off with some of his money. <laughs> no, Honorable Speaker, I am, I am found culpable to be charged. I think those are matters we should leave before the courts for the court to consider what evidence will be adduced by the DPP and the DPP's witnesses, and whatever defense Margaret Nyakango will mount in court. Because I agree with Honorable Chepkonga, it is one thing to read the Constitution and claim independence of the office, excluding us from reading the Article 6 on integrity. Honorable Speaker, what you are being invited by the leader of my minority to pronounce yourself on is not for you to pronounce yourself on. Because what the leader of minority is now inviting you to is a political duel. And it is okay for the political duel out there in press conferences, in uh, other organized media, but to attempt to use this chamber to prosecute a matter that is in court, I think the leader of minority also duly noted that matter will be subjudice, and I would really want to implore on him to heed your advice that even those who seek to defend Margaret, they may actually be prejudicing her case in court it is safer for us to leave that matter to court. Let the court make a determination based on evidence that will be adduced in court. We don't, have, we don't know what evidence the DPP has. There is nothing in our constitution and in our laws that say either the Auditor General or the holder of an independent office like the controller, uh, controller of budget are immune to prosecution. And in fact, that will be the height of impunity if we say that a holder of a constitutional office, like the leader of majority, is immune to prosecution, that independent office holders or constitutional commission holders are immune to prosecution. Honorable Speaker, when we say that we shall deal with impunity, and this House, including the leader of minority who is a member of this House, must be seen at the forefront of the fight against graft. And graft, Honorable Speaker, is not only graft when it touches on public funds or in, on public office. Even those who are in the private sector who are engaging graft, Honorable Speaker, we must have the forefront as leaders to speak against graft and impunity in this country, Honorable Speaker. It is not lost on me, Honorable Speaker, that the same people today who purport to be defending Margaret Nyakango are the same people who yesterday were vilifying the same Margaret when she spoke about state capture, when she spoke about how she was forced in the wee hours of the last regime to withdraw 15 billion shillings from the exchequer. Thank God, Honorable Speaker, that today we are not speaking about Margaret Nyakango being forced by anybody in government to make withdrawals from the exchequer or to approve payments that she thinks should not be approved. We are talking about impropriety on the person of Margaret Nyakango before she came into office as a controller of budget. Nothing to touch on, on, on uh, her conduct in office. Honorable Speaker, lastly, I was a co-chair of the National Dialogue Committee. And I know a matter that Margaret Nyakango said in that committee that has now been blown out of proportion. And I had the leader of minority allude to it, although selectively, with some selective amnesia of what was said in that committee. But because I was chairing that committee, I know when the, the National Treasury CS 
answered on the question of whether there was budgeted corruption on expenditures in the office of Margaret Nyakango. Because I remember Margaret Nyakango said that there is budgeted corruption, and I can give the example of my own office, where I am the only public officer, I know how, how much I earn, but what was budgeted for my pay was almost two times. And Honorable Speaker, the National Treasury did explain that part of what was budgeted for in the Office of the Controller of Budget included other entitlements to that office, like car grants, mortgage, which had not been taken. Honorable Speaker, again, out of what the Honorable Leader of Minority seems to be doing very well, 